Can you tell us a little bit about the research that you've done recently about the mining in general here in Lebanon? I, I heard you did it uh, in a collaboration with uh, some famous university. So in 2022, Research and Story for the Rest of the World, which is a US publication covering uh, technology outside of, uh, in inverted commas, the West. I did it in collaboration with a friend and colleague called Adam Hassan, mm -hmm. who uh, is a PhD at the University of uh, California. Berkeley. And we uh, set out to find out the scale and nature of mining operations in Lebanon, mm -hmm. where, which is a really interesting case because when the crisis hit in Lebanon and the lira, the Lebanese lira fell off of its peg, there was a period where government institutions were still conducting their affairs at the formal exchange rate, which meant that if you were dealing in dollars, electricity was extremely cheap. And for a period, there was a kind of explosion of mining because and Lebanon's a very connected country and once somebody starts doing something and having success, very quickly, word spread. The official rate was then $1 equal 1,500 exactly, yeah. So for the residential bills, we were still paying based on this rate. Which so, meant even in the early days of the crisis, <coughs> when, I mean, today a dollar is worth around 90,000 lira. So even in the early days of the crisis, when the dollar was worth, say, 3,000 as opposed mm. to 1,500, you're still paying 50% discount on your electricity. So people who had access to computers to do it and started doing it. This was quite a brief period because after that, the electricity grid started to collapse. So it was no longer viable to, to mine using the state electricity. Almost free state electricity. The almost free state electricity, which is great if it's there. It was continuous yeah. and <laughs> yeah. reliable. Yeah. Uh, what happened was there's an area in Lebanon called the Shouf. It's a beautiful area. It's a very beautiful it's area. Very beautiful it's stunning. Area. Yeah, yeah. And it's served by three hydropower plants. Oh. So even when the electricity grid collapsed, this area continued to receive electricity. So much of the mining that was going on tried to move their operations to the Shouf. So when uh, the electricity grid collapsed in Lebanon, many of the miners moved to the Shouf, ah. uh, where there's a region, there's about 200 villages that are served by three hydroelectric power plants, which were still running at the time. This resulted in a lot of very disparate decentralized miners looking for locations where they could ah. plug into this hydropower. And in each of these villages, you saw a different response from the authorities. So some tried to shut them down and expel them. Some called in uh, the state in the form of the police or uh -huh. other authorities to do that. Other villages are under the de facto control of political actors, which are not subservient to the state. And so it was harder for police to do anything in those places. And there was one village in particular where an enterprising individual managed to coordinate these miners so that they could find locations, they would not threaten the stability of the local grid, and local residents would even receive rental uh, income from the miners for uh -huh. using their space. Were they paying uh, commercial or residential uh, rate? At first, they were, I believe, paying residential rates. As that operation expanded, entered into negotiations with the electricity company, and some of those operations now are big enough that they have deals with the electricity company which allow them to have private transformers on the property. Uh -huh. 